Welcome to another edition of Kenny's Cantina, eating in style on the road. Brrr, it's cold outside. Here in southeastern Pennsylvania, we haven't had a lot of snow yet, but we have had some bitter cold. It was six degrees the other morning. That's minus 14 Celsius for those of y'all outside the U.S. But don't worry, my RV's made for it, and I'm staying quite toasty inside. I did escape the cold and flew down to Key West for a few days. Oh man, the weather was great. Warm and sunny, and it was so great to wear shorts and flip-flops. I had a blast. I ate sushi and had tapas and eggs benedict and shrimp and even some great Mexican food. There's nothing like fresh seafood, though. Now, one thing about me, I always wind up meeting locals who quickly become new friends. Key West was no different. Julian, Gary, and Dave are some great local guys who helped me celebrate my birthday, and they kept me out till 3 a.m., way past my bedtime. They also grabbed lunch with me at Hogfish Bar and Grill before dropping me at the airport. Now, if you've never tasted hogfish, you are missing it. It tastes like scallops, and Hogfish Bar and Grill makes a tremendous hogfish sandwich. I got it deep fried. It comes with cheese and mushrooms and onions. Mmm, it is so good. Now, unfortunately, you can't really find hogfish outside the Keys. So if you haven't been to the Keys, do try to make it. It is beautiful down there. Now let's get to some cooking. If you're like me after a holiday, you always end up with leftovers. You can only eat so many warmed up dinners or sandwiches, but you hate to lose good leftover meat. This is especially true for me in a holiday ham. So how do you add some variety with throwing out some perfectly good ham? My Hawaiian ham salad is a quick, easy way to use that leftover ham. This tasty salad blends the sweetness of pineapple with the saltiness of ham and the crunch of fresh vegetables. You're going to love this dish in using up your leftover ham. And it's so easy. I made up a batch of this and gave it out as samples around the RV park and folks loved it. I even had one taster who doesn't do mayo and he loved it. So let's whip up some Hawaiian ham salad. Prep time on this is about 15 minutes. Cooking time, no cooking involved. You already cooked the ham. And what we're making today will serve about four. And I'll store this in the fridge for like three days, but don't freeze it. Ingredients, you're gonna need two cups of diced ham, one fourth large sweet onion dice, three celery stalks diced, an eight ounce can of pineapple chunks, a quarter cup of mayo, three tablespoons of Dijon mustard, and four tablespoons of deli-style pickle relish. Now let's start off. We're going to dice the ham into about quarter-inch pieces. Get this diced up. And measure that. Let me put that into a mixing bowl. Next up is the onion. Again, we're going to dice that into about quarter inch dices. Let me add that to the mixing bowl. Let me mix that up. All right, next comes the celery. I kind of cut off that white end at the end of it. And get this diced up. All right, throw that in the mixing bowl and stir. Next up is the pineapple. Let me open up this can. And the last time I drained pineapple for my Thai pineapple coconut chicken stir fry, season two, episode six, I was called out for not saving the pineapple juice. So save the juice. It tastes great. And you can always add a little rum for a quick cocktail in it. All right, so I got that drained. Let me just kind of dice up those chunks a little bit. Again, into about quarter inch pieces. Let's add that to the mixing bowl. Mix it up. All right, now let's add the mayo. Measure that out. Stir that in. Now the Dijon mustard. This really adds a little kick or a little spice 
to the dish. And we're going to do those. Okay, that's got that. Stir that up and mix it. Okay, now the pickle relish. You know, in the pickle relish, I'm using a deli style, which is kind of a little fresher and not quite as processed as like the relish that you get in the squeeze, squeeze bottle. But if that's all you have, go ahead and use that too. And mix that in. All right, that's it. It's so quick and easy. Let me grab a fork and grab a taste of this. Mm. Mm. Boy, that, that does taste great. You have that sweetness from the pineapple, a little saltiness from the ham. Got that nice crunch from the celery and the onions, gives it a little crunch. And really the pickle relish adds some tartness to it. And then that Dijon mustard adds a little bit of spice and the mayo kind of just melds everything into the salad. It's really amazing that you don't have to add any other spices to this dish. It comes out great. You can go ahead and eat it right away or optionally, you can, if you have time, you can chill it for about a half hour in the refrigerator and this will help blend the flavors a little more together. For serving, you can always enjoy the Hawaiian salad on crackers or in a sandwich, but you've been eating so many sandwiches trying to use it up, so try something different. You can make a really healthy lettuce wrap with this Hawaiian salad that's really good, or you can make up some coleslaw and put the Hawaiian salad on top, and then you get a really nice kind of crunchy treat with a little more sweetness from the coleslaw, and that's really good. Now, for tips, you can use crushed pineapple instead of chunk pineapple. I've done that before, and that does work too, as well. If you don't have pickle relish, you can always just dice up some dill pickles and, and throw that in. That'll work too. If you do want a little more kick, just sprinkle some pepper flakes into it to make it a little more spicy. I like to add some thinly sliced Parmigiano Reggiano cheese to the salad. And, and that gives it just a little bit of bitterness from the cheese. It's really cool. I know you and your family are going to love this Hawaiian ham salad as a welcome break to all those ham sandwiches. So enjoy. I, I know you all are going to love it. Now let's get to the mail. I always enjoy this part of the show. It's great to hear from my viewers from around the world. It blows me away every time I read your questions and comments. I can't get to all of them on the air, but know that they are greatly appreciated. The questions and comments for today come from my episode on Fideo. This was a special episode because we were celebrating Caleb, my biggest little fan's eighth birthday. A good time was had by all. So thanks to all of you who wished him happy birthday. He was excited to hear that people from around the world said happy birthday. His dad told him that he was world famous. There were also some great comments and questions regarding the dish. So let's get to the mail. Maria from Cape Cod said, there's always someone who has way too much information. I made this dish for a group of people and wouldn't you know it, when asked, what is this dish called? I replied, Fideo. Well, that was not good enough because I was corrected by a know-it-all. No, it's, it is called Sopa de Fideo. They did, that didn't go over too big. Maria, thanks for writing in. Sopa part of the name your know-it-all pointed out translates to soup. And there are Sopa de Fideos out there, but they are a soup, usually a tomato broth with the Fideo noodles. I dropped the Sopa from the, my dish because it doesn't really have the consistency of a soup. I hope this clears things up and please we, keep watching, Maria. Elena from Great Britain said, my neighbor who happens to be Arabic was over for dinner and I made this dish and during dinner he explained that this dish, fideo, comes from Arabic sadas, adopted in the Iberian Arabic variations in Spain during Muslim rule. He also stated that back in his hometown that this dish was a family favorite and was surprised with the flavor of your dish. He enjoyed it very much and even went back for seconds. He stated that your dish had a much different flavor from the dish he grew up with. You were a hit. Thanks. 
Elena, I'm glad your Arabic friend enjoyed your fideo. There are a lot of similarities between Mexican food and Spanish and Arabic foods. The Iberian Peninsula was under Muslim rule from around 711 until 1492. You can't control an area for so long and not have a lasting impact. Food, architecture, science, and a whole host of other things have been influenced by the Moors being in Spain. The Iberian Peninsula was a light in the Dark Ages in the rest of Europe. Now, your friend mentioned that the dish tasted different, which stands to reason as local cultures adapt to spices and foods that are available. Elena, thanks so much for your comment. Man, I love history. Uh, Julieta from California asks, are fideo and vermicelli the same, or am I mixing the two up? Julieta, this is a good question. Fideo and vermicelli are the same thing. Typically, Italian vermicelli is found with the other boxed pastas and is long like spaghetti pasta. Vermicelli, labeled fideo, is found in the Latin Isle. It's typically either broken pieces or is bird's nest. But at the heart of it, they are the same pasta. So thanks for letting me clarify that, Julieta. Betty from Colorado asks, what other side dishes can you recommend with fideo meal? As told by my husband, is that it? Hey, Betty, side dishes are always good. Here are some options. Try my street corn casserole from Season 2, Episode 12. This is a great dish. You can also serve fideo with refried beans. Refried beans go really well with the fideo, and I usually serve them as an accompaniment. I will be preparing refried beans later in the season. And another thing you can do is just have a simple side salad of shredded lettuce, tomato, and avocado. That works too. I hope this helps satisfy your husband, Betty. And then Sheila from Australia wanted your wanted my help. Major dish, but not too sure what I did wrong. My fideo came out sticky. Can you help? Do you think it might be where I live that had an effect on the dish, or did I do something wrong? Oh, no, Sheila. It, it doesn't have to do with where you live. There's really a simple fix for your sticky fideo. Just add more meat broth. When you prepare the fideo, you want some liquid to still be present. This is really important when reheating as well. And when I reheat, I'll add either some beef broth or water to the leftover fideo just to make sure that it doesn't get sticky. So I hope this solves your problem, Sheila, and thanks for watching. Now, thanks for everyone's questions and comments. It's so great to see that y'all are preparing and enjoying my dishes. There will be more to come. If you want your question to move to the top of the list, post it to my website, kennyscantina.com. Now, up next on Kenny's Cantina, I'm, I'll be breaking out my wok to prepare sesame chicken. It really looks appetizing. And I'll be sharing some tips I have for making sesame chicken a success at your di dinner table. So join me next time on a culinary trip to the Orient. And thanks for watching my show. You're the reason that I do what I do. So please keep watching. If you missed any of my previous shows, you can find them in my recipes at kennyscantina.com. And please check out and follow me on Instagram at, a, at Kenny's Cantina and look for my Kenny's Cantina webpage. I post my cooking and travels in between shows in both places. So thanks again for watching. Now, Kenny's Cantina would not be possible without the sponsorship and help of the Roadhogs Media Network in IBC Productions. So a big thanks to them. Thanks for watching and see y'all on the road.